Okay. okay. You're fine. Yes, I mean, you're fine with time, right? Huh? You're fine with yes. time? Yes. Okay. So everybody's, everybody's in here okay? Okay, so this is going to be the ostomy station. I want some interaction. I want you guys to kind of work with me. I, I really already gave, gave you guys a handout so you have a lot of that information. Okay. You guys had the lecture this morning. Okay. So, so what are some reasons why you would have a patient that would have an ostomy? Colon cancer. Okay. Cancer. Okay. Cancer of the colon. Okay. Ulcerations. Diverticulitis. Diverticulitis and hopefully a temporary one that we'll reanastomose later. Very good. Crohn's disease. Irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. Good. So that's some of the main ones that we see the majority of the time in the hospital. Okay, so I kind of made your mannequin up this morning for you, so that we kind of have some stuff to look at. And I love to play. So I have three different ones on here. Can you guys kind of tell me by looking at some of this, which type each one is, and why? So like this one down here, where's it located? Okay, where's it located on the abdomen? Right lower quadrant. Okay, right lower quadrant. What would be most likely in that right lower quadrant? An ileostomy or starting up to the ascending colon, right? Okay, so how about this one? And, and then if you look at this, and you guys haven't gotten close enough yet, and I don't know if he can kind of... I can see it. See, see how it, I want you guys to come feel this and stuff. And what does that liquid feel like? Okay, so kind of watery, semi-liquid, right? So watery, semi-liquid is what type of colostomy most of the time? Okay, and we're kind of talking the ones we've had for a while because, yes, initially, right after we've had a new one post-operative, they cannot, you know, conserve that fluid right away, so it's very liquidy. It's almost like pure water with just a little bit of particles in it. Okay, yeah, make sure, I had so much fun playing, you guys have to enjoy it. Okay, so this one's kind of high, but I had to have room on my mannequin. So this one is located where? Okay, so the transverse colon. And, and if you were documenting on your chart, where would you say that's located? Upper, yeah, upper, upper mid quadrant of the abdomen, okay, because that's what you're going to kind of document. So what do you think of the effluent that is in here? More, a little bit more mushier. Okay. Okay. Getting some more of the fluid out of it. Getting to be more semi-formed to formed. Okay. So that's what we'd expect there. Okay. How about this one over here? You guys might have to fill it to kind of. Okay. That more formed, more firm. Really not much water. <laughs> okay, so 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 what's where this is located? What type of ostomy? Sigmoid or descending? Descending or sigmoid? Because yeah, it is kind of getting low. Um, so descending or sigmoid? And so what do we expect from that kind of effluent? More, more, firm, more firm, more formed, more like a normal stool. Yeah, we've absorbed the water out of there more like a regular stool. So can I have this type of pouch on there? There's no opening in the end. There's no way for me to empty that on a routine basis, like daily, every four hours. Can I do that? Okay, yeah. Yep, it's disposable. And I would expect it to be more like those normal stools. They might only have one every two days. Okay, so they're not going to have to change that, like the ileostomy that we're going to be emptying every, you know, four hours, sometimes every two. Okay, so it's not going to be as repetitive. I don't need an opening at the bottom. Okay, good job. Okay, so we're coming in and we want to just do general maintenance of our ostomy. So what's one of the first things, let's do this one because it's a clearer bag and you can see. What's one of the first things you want to be assessing? The stoma. The stoma. So what do we want to document about our stoma? Beefy red. What's some other colors? Moist. So the color. Okay, what do I want my color beefy red or dark red? What colors do I not want it to be? Blue or black. What does blue or black mean? Circulation. That's right. I have not got circulation in that part of my colon, and it is turning black on me. It's getting necrotic. Okay, some other colors I don't want? 
white or pale pink, and what's that signifying? It's the beginning of that process. I could have a blood clot that's giving some ischemia to the area. I'm not getting good circulation. So it's going to be a pillar pink or a white. I need to alert my surgeon right away so they can correct that problem so I don't lose that portion of the bowel. Okay, good. So color we need to know. So we got that, that down, beefy red or red and moisture. What else do I want to document about my stomach? Okay, what kind? Of, do, do I have buddy? Is it protruding? And then how much? You know, you want to measure that because we want it to kind of be like half an inch or up like at least a centimeter. Okay, so we want to measure that and say how much buddy. Now, if we don't have buddy, what's an other type of stoma you can have? You could have flushed where it is just actually equal to your abdominal wall. And what's the other type you started to say, Patty? Convex. So what we're saying is one that kind of really kind of dimples in. Think of it as a dimple. It kind of dimples in. They are very hard to put an appliance on to not leak around them. And that's where you have that convex appliance that kind of goes down and will hopefully seal around it. Okay, so we've got our color. We've got protruding. What else do we want to document about our stoma? Well, we do want to talk about the skin around, but I'm still on stoma. Okay, size of it, so we can measure because if it's initially post-op, what do we expect with that size? To be bigger and eventually shrink. shrink. Okay, so remember that measurement thing. We can kind of measure it and, and document a measurement on our progress notes and on our cardex so we can keep track. What else along with that measurement? What are we looking at? Well, we're going to talk about that next. Well, that's the effluent that we'll talk about. How about sh yeah, or shape? Is it circular? Is it oval? Or is it just a regular shape? You know, we do like them to be circular, but honestly, the majority that I see are kind of oval. <laughs> you know, that, that you get. So we do want to kind of know the shape of that. So the measurement and the shape. Okay, so we got the stoma. So what was the next thing we were going to assess? Peristomal. Okay, the peristomal skin around that. Okay, so what am I looking at on that peristomal skin? And that's going to really be when I change the appliance or like my little 1 8 to 1 16th inch, which hopefully has adhesive around it too that I really probably can't see the skin. But as I change my wafer, I'm going to look at that peristomal skin. What do I want it to look like? Pink, intact, dry. Okay, what are some things I'm going to be looking for that are abnormal? Red and Darius. Ulcerations. Any swelling. Okay. What will moisture do? It'll break it down and what do we call that? Maceration. When you have fluid that's in an area, your skin becomes macerated. Okay, it's a little dematous, a little whitish pink looking. It's breaking it down. Which of these three are going to have the worst potential for skin breakdown? And why does the ileostomy have the greatest chance? Right, it has the digestive enzymes, which is going to break down the protein of the skin. Very good, you guys listened well to the lecture this morning. Okay, so besides the maceration, redness, ulcered areas, um, blisters, cracking, you're going to kind of look at that stuff. And a lot of that, and, and when you say the redness, what I do want to point out is sometimes it's just an allergy to that um, pectin or the product we're using. So again, we want to put some stoma powder on that, protect it, and try a new appliance, test the skin area out. Okay, so you've got that. Now the next thing we're going to assess, we've done the stoma, we've done the skin, what are we to next? So you're going to document your charting. And, and what do we call our stool? Effluent. Yep. But you know, if they, you call it stool, they're going to know what you mean too. Okay, so the effluent. What do we want to document about our effluent? The consistency. The color, consistency, consistency amount, amount. Yeah, okay. odor. and any odor, any odor that you're really noting, especially if it's abnormal. Okay, so we do want to document it in our charting, and what else do we want to document after that? What else are we watching these for? What else do they produce? Gas. 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 Are we passing flatus? Are we passing flatus and how much? And they'll talk about going in and burping your bag. And they seriously mean that your bag's going to fill up with gas or fluid and it's going to be just popping out. And if you do not undo that and let that air out and burp it, it's going to pop off your patient and make a big mess all over the place. Okay, so, so how often do you think you need to go in there and check these? 
How often do you need to be assessing those? Three to four hours. Every two to four hours. And it's going to really depend on the type you have and if it's a new post-op one or if it's a mature appliance. But if you think in acute care, you're going to check it every two to four hours. Go in there, at least take a big look at it, see if it needs burped, see if it needs to be emptied. When do we empty them? Okay, a third to a half full. If it is getting over a half full, what's going to happen? What's our potential? The weight's going to pull off. The weight is going to pull either your wafer off the skin or is going to pull the appliance off. So a third to a half full, that needs to be emptied. Okay, so maintenance-wise, how are we going to empty these? Drain them. Okay, if you have one of these two appliances and I have a clamp for you and a Velcro, we're going to drain them out of the bottom. And any kind of spessy hat, um, graduate cylinder, depends on the facility you're at, what they have that they drain their Foley catheters in, that's really the same uh, measurement appliance you're going to use. I didn't have a graduate cylinder, so this is kind of an example. Okay, so we're going to put that underneath there and undo the clamp and drain it. How are we going to rinse that out? Okay, you could, you could take a syringe and squirt water up there and swish it around and, and clean it out. Can I take my appliance off and go rinse it out? Trick question. <laughs> what about this, one, this one's draining continually? And you're in there rinsing that out and it's just draining all over your way from Because maybe not your ileostomy. <laughs> your ileostomy, you might want to get a new bag and when this one's getting really dirty that you really need to clean it out good, you might want to go ahead and put your new bag on and then go rinse this out, let it dry, and you can, you know, interchange those two. Okay, but some of your other ones, you're pretty safe to go ahead and take that off, put a washcloth over it, rinse it out, bring it, bring it back. So it depends on where it's located and how much effluent you're getting. Okay, so besides taking that off and rinsing it out and putting it back on, there was something else I just wanted to ask you and then my mind went. <laughs> Um, I can't think right now. I had something else I wanted to tell you now I can't remember. Okay, so I do um, want you, this one is a Velcro one. So I kind of want you guys to pass that around and kind of undo the Velcro and do that back up. And I need more than one clamp. But what I'm going to try to do is keep my little effluent in here so I don't make a mess. Nope. I am. Because my thing's not on. Because my bag's not on. This is what could happen. This is what could happen. I wouldn't do that on a real patient. Okay, your clamp, your clamp is very simple. There's one thing people make a mistake about. All you have to do is lay it down flat on the end of your bag, fold it up one time, and lock it. Okay? The mistake some people do is they take it and roll it up thinking it's going to stay on better. Well, what happens is that's too thick for the clamp. It really doesn't lock on you and it opens back up. It, rolling it does not make it more secure. Actually, it makes it less secure. And that's probably the number one mistake I see in the clinical setting is people thinking if you roll it, it's going to stay on better. So I do want everybody also to do the clamp and practice that. Okay. And I'm probably good on taping wise. I mean, I think that's the main point. So okay. All that. So you can <laughs> love me. She has the rest.